Midtown, Tennessee. <clears throat> hey, y'all. Andrew Reed here with Mozzie Creek Mushrooms. And today, we're going to do another strain-specific video because it's been a rough week. And I want to make sure I get content out to you guys. I already have the footage for this strain, so that's what we're going to do. And ain't no secret, you already seen it on the thumbnail. We're going over BS8. Oh, I'm sorry. Rocky Top Oyster. That's what it's called. Call it Rocky Top Oyster. We've been growing as BS8 for like the past year or so. If you have BS8, it is the same as the Rocky Top Oyster. Now, excitingly, a couple of things about it really quick. I'm very partial to this strain. It's a bread strain by me. It came from the Blue Snow Cross, the Lambert's 123, to the North Forest Snow Oyster Cross that we've done. Um, and this oyster has now replaced Lambert's 123 as our production blue. We also do King Blue. King Blue represents, like I've, I've said before, a ton of our production. Um, we use King Blue as... We don't count that as a blue oyster, even though it is blue. We have a standard traditional blue, right? Well, now we've gone with Rocky Top. And you guys may have wondered why Rocky Top. Maybe, you know, if you don't know Tennessee, you don't know it. But, you know, there's that old song. Uh, oh, what? how's it go? Once two strangers climbed old Rocky Top looking for a moonshine still. Strangers ain't come down from Rocky Top, reckon they never will. Corn won't grow at all on Rocky Top, dirt's too rocky by far. That's why all the folks on Rocky Top get their corn from a jar. Rocky Top, you'll always be home sweet home to me. Go, oh Rocky Top, Woo! Rocky Top, Tennessee. Wonder <laughs> y'all, <laughs> you were behind me. Ah, uh, brings back memories. So, anyways, ain't no smoggy smoke on Rocky Top. Ain't no telephone bills. Well, there's telephone bills now. Uh, <laughs> but that said, uh, we call it Rocky Top because that this is now our flagship oyster, the Rocky Top oyster before that BSA. And we have a description here that Samantha just typed up for me. I was like, hey, can you give me your thoughts? And I'll just read it verbatim here. Um, we'll throw some B-rolls so you won't just see me reading. But the BS-8 is a cross between Lambert's 123 and North Force Snow Oyster. It showcases an extremely deep blue pin set, maturing into a buff or slate-colored center that fades into a dark navy blue lip. These colors contrast attractively against the stark white stems, which are a delectable meaty texture and a fantastic improvement over the harder stems of the typical blue oyster found in production. Yields on the BS-8 are higher than their average competitors, with record breakers weighing in at three pounds, um, in a, over at the three pounds mark easily. BS-8 is now a production standard for blue oysters here at Mossy Creek Mushrooms, and has our stamp of approval by earning the name Rocky Top. It will be difficult to top this one, folks. Oh, Rocky Top, top. I get it. Good job. <laughs> uh, temps on the Rocky Top. This is a wide range oyster. This is actually one of the reasons why I really prefer it over Lambert's 123, and it's because it actually performs better in the heat than Lambert's 123 does. I haven't noticed um, better performance in the cold because Lambert's has always done really well in the cold, but this one does much better in the heat. It's no mother of pearl or Elm Z. It does not, I wouldn't say that it pins into the 90s, but my goodness, hopefully your room's not getting into the 90s because that was so stressful for me. Uh, but. The, uh, the Rocky Top does have a wide range. I would not want to grow it um, really above 75, ideally, if I could keep my room below 75. It, it will fruit higher, but the colors are always better, you know, if you can get those temperatures lower. Now, that said, this is a kind of a chameleon strain. This strain has thrown people for a loop and i've got some pictures here and maybe i can just show some of those as of course the, the whole video you're going to see a wide range of i don't know how to put it like phenotypes i mean really would be the way to put it but um this this oyster has it's the oyster of many faces so far we've had people grow it in warm room conditions and it kind of fades 
to more of a gray white when they did that. Um, I've not had that. <clears throat> I've not had that issue. Like I've never had it go kind of a white color. Um, it is almost always a deep brown or a deep blue for me. And even if it's deep blue, it all that blue always fades from the center out, uh, leaving a brown behind with a dark blue lip. And it. So the videos I have of Samantha picking and weighing a couple of strains or a couple of clusters, they're coming out very brown, right? So this this oyster actually has a wide range of colors. You grow the same oyster all year and you get different colors. <laughs> that said, it's still the same meaty texture and um, produces really nice caps. Now, <clears throat> its spawn runs about 10 to 14 days, which is pretty pretty good, pretty standard. And I mean, it's actually on the quick side of standard. And the humidity, I've noticed that we put it in the wet room. We've got a room that stays much wetter, much more wet than our other room. And then we've got a room that stays a little bit more dry. BSA grows in both. The, the Rocky Top just grows in both, hands down, super well. I have never had this strain blotch out on me. That's not saying that it won't, but I have not one time, not even a single block, <laughs> has this oyster mushroom blotched out on us. So I, I assume if I had a really dirty block and a really dirty grow room, it would be possible for this to, to blotch out. And it's not got the stems as fat on it as the Old Road or the King Blue those big, thick, meaty stems, but they are much closer to the King Blue than your standard oyster is. Much more finer, much much finer texture, much more finer, much finer texture um, on stems than, so I'll give you an example. There, there are some oysters, and you guys who've been growing oyster mushrooms, you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. There are some oysters that when you grow them, they have these thin kind of stems that are almost stringy when you pull them across. It's not anything bad necessarily, but it's almost um, a gristly texture maybe, kind of uh, coarse in the stems. I don't really know how to, to put it exactly, but I'm sure you guys will know what I'm talking about. Put it in the comments below. Help me out with a description of, of what we're talking about. But it's like oysters that will shred really easy when you're picking. The the Rocky Top doesn't have that. It, it picks very easily. And that meaty texture, it is just thick, meaty, and not any of that gristly, stringy texture to it at all that you see in some oysters. And now, um, <clears throat> I also asked uh, Jack to write some stuff down as well, and he called it the chameleon oyster. <laughs> that was his first thing, right? There, chameleon oyster, talking about that color change. Um, often expresses different phenotypes, typically light brown, which is that kind of slate, which is, you know, uh, slate, stand, sandstone. It's really um, that kind of buff brown. That's that we're, They're famous for that color stone around here, that, that brown and gray. Um, he says in cooler temps, it keeps its beautiful blue color. And this is like, the Lambert's 123 is blue. And I, I've got an ex a, a picture I'm thinking of exactly, and I'll put it right here, Andrew. Put that picture with the really white stems on here for them. But uh, it's, it comes out, the pins will come out a really deep, dark blue, and the stems are so white. They are stark white. Lambert's 123, I thought, was a white oyster with blue on it. It's not. I don't know why this strain looks so much more white on the stems than the Lambert's 123. But it, and it may just be that the really dark blue contrasts against it and makes it look more, you know, like a, I don't know, like a clean linen sheets kind of thing. But uh, Jack says, excellent in terms of weight, three pounds um, average. I don't have any video of that. The last time we did video was uh, two, three weeks ago. And we had, um, I think I've got 2.6, 2.6 seven or 2.7 i'm not sure exactly but you'll see it in the video here our our yields are very much um two and a half pounds and over with the strain and sweet jack says sweet in terms of flavor pairs well with all aromatic ingredients i don't really know what that means 
aromatic ingredients. Would that be like like citrus and stuff? That, that sounds good because it would go really well with citrus. He said it definitely can be used. <clears throat> excuse me. Can definitely be used as a meat substitute. Marinades very well. I have not tried the marinade. He did. He made a curry with it, and he said that it was amazing in the curry because the texture. You know, typically curry would hide your mushrooms flavor and i this oyster is sweet but it is not the most flavorful of oysters but the texture oh that's got an amazing texture so now samantha also wrote uh some handwritten notes as well she again first things first what is that has a lovely color variance see samantha always has like a way with words can present a dark blue that fades to a smoky gray also presents a gorgeous buff and stone color that the shale in our area has. So see, she referenced the shale as well. As you, you can tell we've got common language when it comes to this stuff. Nice clusters that are easy to pick. Often weighs in at 2.6 to 2.8 pounds. Fills a case nicely without breakage. That's important for a lot of you guys selling to restaurants and distributors. This oyster does not break easy. It, it handles, it's a nice rough handling oyster. And she says, produces caps. And she put that in all caps and then put an uh, exclamation mark with it. Chefs like the smaller caps, and it produces a lot of them. Similar structure to the blue one, two, three, but with a more meaty cap. And she says, produces consistently without fail. Again, like I said, likes cooler weather but can take a hit in the heat, though the color will present more towards the buff in warmer weather in, as in our notes. And I agree exactly with all of that stuff. I mean, it, you heard my thoughts and then, and then other people's, and it lines up pretty dang well, um, all of our experiences so far. I know some people have had experiences with Rocky Top already, so please throw that in the comments. I want to know all about that. Um, this is definitely a commercial oyster at this point. I, Like I said, it's taken over as our workhorse mushroom. I like the word workhorse mushroom. The, the workhorse mushroom... Um, sorry, Rocky Top is now a workhorse mushroom. It is one of our... <laughs> B BS8 is now one of our workhorse mushrooms. And it, um, it is taken over as our standard. But Lambert's one, two, three. In fact, go look at my YouTube banner right now um, as of making this video. I will change it in the next few weeks. So if you're listening to this video a few weeks after it came out, you may not see this. But the YouTube banner that I have, just go to my YouTube page, you'll see three clusters of Lambert's 1, 2, 3. They, they're very nice clusters. They're beautiful. I remember when that was my standard. That's why I put that on the banner. That is not my standard anymore. Like Rocky Top is now my standard, which is why we gave it the moniker for our home. Oh, Rocky Top. This oyster will make you feel like you're at home. <laughs> that said, y'all, uh, let me know what experience you've had with this. Is it as a workhorse of a mushroom for you as it is for us? Uh, are you excited about it? Do you think it sucks? Let me know. Let me know where this strain belongs. And as always, y'all, keep spawning culture. Um, and, you know, I don't tend to get into geopolitical stuff but just you know world's going crazy it's just so weird to me let's just uh keep doing good by each other guys too much war and panic in this world so let's keep helping each other out let's keep giving each other information and uh as a, of course if there's anything that uh you guys want to see put it in the comments down below and again, I'll just say it one more time. Maybe I need to explain that too. Like, keep spawning culture to me. And maybe I'll do a video on it one time or I'll do a blog post video where we just do B roll in the reading of. But, you know, I mean, obviously there's the trope of keep spawning culture, like, keep spawning your cultures. But also, guys, I want to, I've wanted to change the culture of mushrooms from this, like, mysterious wizard in the tower. Only I know the deep secrets to a deep ecological system of mushroom growers, each with their own niche and information and energy exchange between us all. When I say energy, I mean money, I guess, but like also cultures, genetic material, um, 
you know, we, there, there's a lot more that we can be doing for each other. And, uh, of course, I'm going to try to do my best every bit of the way that I can. But uh, I just appreciate you guys helping create this culture of the syndicate and uh, busting mushrooms wide open. And, uh, yeah, y'all, keep spawning the culture. Thanks. Let to go and do. Let to you.